These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. So when we were covering benzene before, we were talking about electrophilic aromatic substitution. And now one of the key topics in this chapter is nucleophilic aromatic substitution. An abbreviation that's used for that sometimes is this. I don't know if your instructor used this. But you remember from the first term that this would stand for a bimolecular nuclear substitution, SN2. Well, here we have an aromatic nuclear substitution. Aromatic nuclear substitution. So that's just another way of writing the same thing. Now, in electrophilic aromatic substitution, electrophilic aromatic substitution is given that name because an electrophile attacks the benzene. So in this reaction, we should have a nucleophile attacking the benzene. That means what role is the benzene going to play? It's going to have to be the electrophile. So even though this is called nucleophilic aromatic substitution, the benzene is going to play the role of the electrophile. Now we know that it can be difficult, a little difficult, to get benzene reactions to happen because most any kind of benzene reaction has to start by unforming the aromaticity. And benzene doesn't like that. So oftentimes we need some way to activate or help the reaction. For example, we saw that electrophilic aromatic substitution usually need, needed catalysts, like Lewis acid catalysts. Or we're going to have to activate this benzene as well for the nucleophilic aromatic substitution. What types of substituents would activate us here? Electron donating substituents or electron withdrawing substituents for this reaction? Electron withdrawing. Electron withdrawing. Because that would make this into a better electrophile. For example, like the example that's usually used is a nitro group. Now I can see how students could get confused here because this is the opposite of what we said for electrophilic aromatic substitution. For electrophilic aromatic substitution, we said that electron withdrawers were deactivators. But nucleophilic aromatic substitution is the reverse reaction, so it makes sense that the activating effects would reverse as well. So anybody who was an activator for electrophilic substitution would be a deactivator for nucleophilic substitution, and vice versa. So nitro would make it harder to do an electrophilic substitution, but it's making it easier to do a nucleophilic substitution. In fact, this is actually a requirement. We need to have a electron withdrawer on the ring. And actually, the one that's almost always used is nitro groups. In most, almost all cases, you'll see nitro groups used. So we need at least one electron withdrawer to do this nucleophilic substitution. Now let's try to figure out exactly which positions are being activated by the nitro group. Well, do you remember why is a nitro group electron withdrawing? Because You need to be able to remember how to draw a nitro group. So let's draw one of the resonance structures that shows how this nitrogen is pulling electrons towards itself. Let's use electron fishing arrows. Starting with this picture, let's use electron pushing arrows to show, uh, to show a resonance structure where the nitro is drawing the electrons towards itself. Looks like you worked it out. So we can move these pi electrons towards the nitrogen. However, the nitrogen already has a full octet. So we must make room by moving these electrons away as well. Remember to use resonance arrow. Sorry? In the 
in nucleophilic aromatic substitution, it activates the ortho pair groups more than the meta. That's what we're trying to explain. Very good. That's exactly what we're trying to give an explanation for. And we'll see how that is once I get this on the blackboard. Now, it's good that you guys were both very careful with the charges. Then, um, who's at the initial tail here? Well, this atom was at the initial tail. So we have to make sure we put a positive charge on this atom. And who's at the final head? Well, this oxygen was at the final head. Now, notice that the nitrogen was in the middle, so its charge doesn't change. And this oxygen wasn't, have, doesn't have any arrow, so its charge doesn't change. We ended up with a lot of arrow, with a lot of charges here. So we're not saying that this is the major resonance structure, but it's a contributing resonance structure. And that puts a positive charge here. Now let's draw all the other resonance structures for this molecule. So let's use electron pushing arrows to show all the other resonance structures for where the positive charge can be in the benzene ring. So which positions have been activated, ortho, para, or meta here? Ortho. ortho and para. This is the ortho position, this is the para position, and this is the other ortho position over here. But there isn't any resonance structure where there's a positive charge on the meta positions. We've seen that even though benzene has six carbons, the resonance structures usually only involve three of the carbons. So here we have this carbon, this one, and this one. So this is what you've already predicted that this electron withdrawer is going to be activating the ortho and para positions, but not the meta position. Basically, we expect to get only uh, this, so that means that we're, um, so uh, yeah, so uh, we're only going to be able to get attacked in an ortho or a para position, not at the meta. And notice that this is the reverse of the electrophilic substitution again. A nitro group would have been a meta director for electrophilic substitution, but this is the reverse type of substitution. So on the test, if the instructor keeps going back and forth between the two types of substitution, it's easy for a student to get confused. You have to have those clearly differentiated in your mind. So what we've learned is that to do the nucleophilic substitution, we need an electron withdrawing group, and we need to do the substitution at the ortho or the para position. And there's a good chance that you have to do these types of resonance diagrams during the test as an explanation for why some positions are activated and some are not. Remember to use the electron pushing arrows as part of your explanation. Now, what else do we need for the nucleophilic aromatic substitution? Well, obviously, we need a leaving group. You can't do a substitution without a leaving group. And where can I put the leaving group? I need to put it in the ortho or the para positions, because those are the only ones that are activated. So, for example, this would be a good molecule for doing a nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So the more electron withdrawing group wins. The more electron withdrawing group. NO2 is more withdrawing than Cl, so if you add a nucleophile, it would go to the para or ortho than the two. Yeah, basically we're just going to memorize that the nitro group isn't going to act like a leaving group. We haven't seen any reactions, I don't think, where we use a nitro as a leaving group. So the purpose of the nitro group is to activate the ring, and the purpose of the halogen is to be the leaving group. Uh, it, seems like, it seems like it would be possible for a nitro group to be a leaving group, because it does have a positive charge. Um, although actually, overall, the nitro group is neutral, so maybe it's not that great uh, of a leaving group. But anyway, we'll just memorize that we use the nitro group as the activator, and we use a halogen Use almost always a halogen as the This is when we have the benzyne intermediate? That'll actually be the next reaction we go oh, over. Okay. This is not the benzyne reaction. That's right. Okay, I was getting confused because I right. think we've seen some without nitrogen uh, right. on it. And That's a good point. The benzyne reaction doesn't need the electron withdrawer because that usually just put in a lot of heat to get that to go. So that'll be a separate reaction that, again, we need to keep separate. So that'll be the next thing we go over. 
So, but before we get to that, let's finish up with our nucleophilic. No, that's a good point. Let's finish up with our nucleophilic substitution. All right, so the chlorine could be, the leaving group could be here or here. Obviously, if I put the chlorine here, that's equivalent to putting it at this ortho position. So there's basically two positions that we could put the chlorine. 